Okay, so this is number 9 of Lesson 2.2, um, using the power rule and the constant rules, the basic differentiation rules, little shortcuts. So um, this one is to find the slope. of f of x is equal to x to the fifth when x equals negative 2, 0, and positive 2. So three different slopes there. So this is the cool thing is about your power rule is it's real quick to figure out that your derivative, what your derivative is, just bring that 5 down in front and decrease that power by 1. There's your derivative. So to figure out what your slopes are, all you have to do is plug in those x values for each one of them, and it you'll have it. I mean, it's really that easy. It's a lot easier than the limit process to do that. Um, yeah. So that right there gives you... Um, Oops, I started to put a negative, and it is not going to be negative. It's going to be a positive 80. This one, of course, would be 0, and this one would be 8. It would be also be 80. All right, so it makes it a whole lot quicker to do um, when you know your basic differentiation rules. All right, AP is not going to let you get off with not knowing that limit process, though. All right, so make sure you keep in mind what that limit process is. All right, so let's say that we need to find an equation of the tangent line. Then f of x is x squared um, at x equals negative 2. So you've got your x value but you don't have your y values. So keep in mind that you, to write the equation of a tangent line, you have to know slope and you have to have, know your ordered pair. Um, we can go ahead and find the ordered pair um, because, of course, it would lie on this function. So all you have to do is plug in the negative 2 to um, figure out that your ordered pair that you're going to use here is going to be negative 2, 4. So that's going to be the point that you need for your line. Now to find the slope that you're going to need for your line, um, you're going to have to find the derivative of f. So again, you can do that real quick. You can just bring that 2 down in front, bring down the x, decrease that power by 1. Your derivative is 2x. So to fi find your slope when x is negative 2, all you have to do is um, plug negative 2 into the place of x, and your slope is negative 4. So like that, you have your point, you have your slope, you can plug it into your point-slope form. And there's the equation of your tangent line. Okay. Um, let's see some that might make you think a little bit harder. Okay. Let's say that we want to find some number k such that... y equals negative 4x plus 7 is tangent. Whoa, I can write better than that. There we go. Is tangent to f of x is equal to k minus x squared. Okay, so k is just some number, all right, but we just have to get in our mind what it is we're dealing with. Well, our function is a parabola. We know it opens down because x squared is negative. We also know that the vertex would be at 0, k because there's no linear term. So your parabola looks something like this. It's just a rough sketch, okay, and your vertex is at zero and then whatever k is. Okay, get it? You can laugh. I know you want to. All right, and then we have a line that is tangent. Now, this line has a negative slope, so that means don't draw your line here because if you do, that would be a rising line that would have a positive slope. So just sketch it somewhere over here. 
um, your line that would be tangent. And again, it's just a sketch, just to give you an idea of exactly what it is you're dealing with. Okay. Um, so here, this would be y is equal to negative 4x plus 7. And, of course, this is f of x. All right. And we've got to figure out what k is. All right. So to do that, um, we need to figure out um, our derivative and figure out a point and, um, so that we can figure out what k is. So it would be nice to know exactly what this point is, and they don't tell us at all what that point is. So that's one thing that I want to work on right there is to figure out what this point is. Because if I know that point right there, and it's on this line, well, it's also on that parabola. And if I know what this ordered pair is, I could plug it in right here, x and y, and I could solve for k. So that's what I want to work toward here. All right. Well, tangent, of course, implies that we're going to be talking about slope, and we're going to be you know, talking about derivative and all of that fun stuff, okay? So, some things that we know here is that the slope of this line is negative 4. And that's going to help us out a little bit, okay? Well, remember that your slope... My pen is stuck. There we go. Oh, it's bouncing. My slope is the same thing as my derivative. So my slope, negative 4, is equal to whatever my derivative is here. Okay? Don't think that you can't take that derivative. You can. Your derivative of f of x is going to be 0 because k is just some number and the derivative of any number is just 0. Okay, and then we're going to bring down the 2 in front, bring down the x, and decrease the power by 1. So my derivative of f of x is negative 2x. All right, so if slope is derivative, then I can set my slope equal to my derivative, and I can figure out that my x coordinate of this ordered pair is 2. Ah, we are getting somewhere. Okay, so I know what 2 is. Now I need to figure out what y is. I need to figure out what y is. I need to figure out what y is equal to. Ha, huh. I can use this line right here to do that, can I? Okay, because remember this ordered pair, it lies on the parabola and it also lies on the line. y is a function of x. So plug in x right there, your value of 2. So y is equal to negative 4 times 2 plus 7. And that tells me that my y coordinate is going to be negative 1. Okay, so there's my ordered pair right there. And now that I've got that ordered pair of 2, negative 1, like we said earlier, I can take that, plug it into this function right here, and I can figure out exactly what k is. So f of x is equal to k minus x squared. My y value is negative 1. And my x value is 2. So now I can solve this and figure out that k must be equal to 3. So k would have to be 3 in order for, the, in order for this particular line right here to be tangent to that curve. All right, there we go. That is not 3 equals 11 because that is not a true statement, but that little circle wanted to spin and messed me up. Okay, so fun little problem there. I like that problem. Okay, uh, number 12, moving right along. Just a couple more here. All right, let's say that you are given f of x is equal to x squared minus 3 on a closed interval of 2 to 2.1. Now, that's a really tiny interval. It's only one-tenth unit long. What you're going to be asked to do is to find your average rate of change, which means your slope on that interval, 
and that also refers to your let me erase this and organize this a little bit better this is something we talked about earlier in um, last week okay a rock means to find your slope um, of your secant line okay you're also going to be asked to find i rock okay and i rock means instantaneous rate of change at each <coughs> excuse me end point of the interval okay now i rock means the derivative okay so coming back over here in order to find the slope of your secant line then you're going to, and I'm sorry, let me back up right here, derivative, and that is going to refer to the slope of your tangent line. Okay, of your tangent line. So to find the slope of the um, secant line, I need two ordered pairs. Remember, this interval is your domain. These are x values. So we need to find corresponding y values for f of 2 as well as, as for f of 2.1. So that's going to be 2 squared minus 3. That's going to give me 1. This is going to be 2.1 squared minus 3. And that's going to give me one point. Four, one. And so to figure out my slope, I'm going to do y minus y. All over x minus x. And that's going to be 4.1. So my average rate of change is 1.1 is 4.1. Now to find my instantaneous rate of change, I need to know my derivative of the function. My derivative of this function is going to be 2x. And I have to evaluate that at each endpoint. So I'm going to evaluate it at 2. And then I'm going to evaluate it at 2.1, which is 4.2. Notice that average of 4.1 is right in the middle of that okay so your average rate of change is your slope of your secant line instantaneous rate of change is the slope of a tangent line at only one point that's why we had to evaluate both endpoints there okay all right number 13 is just reminding you some of some pre count topics about position function um, for parabolic motion Okay, um, s of t, s here just means position function, is equal to negative one-half gt squared plus v sub zero t plus h sub zero. Um, s, I'm sorry, where g is your, um, your gravity due to acceleration, which is either 32 feet per second um, or if you're not using feet, if you're using meters instead, it would be 98, um, 9.8 meters per second. And of course you can convert units, like if you're using inches or kilometers or whatever, then these can be converted. V sub zero, remember, that means your initial velocity. And H sub zero is your initial height. Okay. S of t would be your height at any given time. Where t, of course, is your time. Okay. Um, 
And what I want you to do with that is to try number 14. 